So guys, today I'm going to be talking about my top five neck knives. Let's get started. Like I was saying, this list is in no specific order than price point. And to give you guys a quick rundown of these knives, in case you're unfamiliar with any of them, this is of course the Mora Companion. This is the Mora Eldress. This is the SE3. This is the LT Wright Camp Muck. And this is the BRK. Bushcrafter, and these are my top five. And now I'm gonna get into why I these five made it onto this list. As you guys probably know or have seen from this channel, I have a lot of neck knives, and I've used a lot of neck knives. And so it really does take quite a special knife to actually make it onto this list because I have many to choose from. But the more companion, the reason why this is one of the first on my list is because this was actually the first neck knife I ever ran. This one specifically is the first yeah, neck time. knife I ever ran alongside the Mora Companion. These were the first, or the Mora Companion slash Clipper were the first two neck knives for me to ever run. And I ran them for around a year and a half and I really liked them. As far as performance goes, they are very good. The price point is incredibly hard to beat on them. Uh, overall, this knife just was such an impressive knife, and like I was saying, you know, uh, I ran it for a long time, so I really understand how to use this knife, and I think for a good starting neck knife, this one is extremely hard to beat. I really think the only thing that could really beat this as a starter neck knife is its newer brother, the Eldress, and the Eldress, once I got it, I was kind of one of the last people as far as YouTube reviewers to go. Uh, to actually get one but now that i've got it it is fastly becoming one of my favorite neck knives ever i mean really as i see the mora eldris it's like a everyday man's uh, se Az azula you know it has a large handle obviously with these mittens it's a little bit hard to show but it actually can fit pretty well even with very large mittens on like i have here today but overall as far as being a very small knife uh, like I said, around the size of an SE Zula, this knife is really, really good. And once again, it keeps that characteristic property of Mora knives, and that is a very good value and a reasonably low when price. I was saying, I really love the Mora Eldress, and it is, in my opinion, really the only Mora that could really beat the Companion as far as being a very compact, very lightweight, but still quite strong uh, neck knife and one of the largest upgrades I see with uh, Eldris is not only it's, is it lighter weight than the companion but they've actually sharpened the spine from factory on the Eldris so it actually throws like sparks. crazy like so I really have been super impressed by it and I think any of you guys who have watched my a lot of my survival kit videos you'll know that the Eldris is pretty much the knife of choice for me and it is that for that reason that it's extremely small, extremely light, but yet extremely capable. So th that is the Companion slash Eldris. I really do love the Companion. Once again, if you're getting in to neck knives and you really want to get a good neck knife to begin with, you know, oftentimes a lot of neck knives are more expensive like these. All three of these are over $100. So neck knives can be a more expensive thing to get into. But if you want really affordable ones, definitely turn to Mora. So number three is the SE3, ironically. <laughs> that is not... Uh, kind of timed that way it's just how it worked out it's just a coincidence but i really love the sc3 this is actually one of my favorites of this entire batch just for the fact that i think it's really good for bushcraft but it's also a really good defensive neck knife and the reason why and i've talked about this i believe in the review is because it's an ultra ultra slim knife i mean you guys can see the thickness on this i mean this is the thinnest as far as overall thickness like throughout the entire knife this is the thinnest knife here i mean you can see with all these other knives the handles they kind of swell out and that is a little bit of a problem with long-term use of the SE3, but when you carry this knife, it is super flat, it's super low profile, it does not stick out at all. So it makes it a really good uh, defensive option, as well as a pretty capable field blade. <clears throat> And so this is had to make my list just for the fact that it, if it's dualism, it also, in my opinion, is one of the most perfect sizes for a neck knife. 
Uh, you know, these smaller neck knives are great, but at the same time, I do like personally just a little bit of a larger knife. And so that's where the SE3 lines right up with me. And so I really like this one. And if you do shop around, normally these things are a little over a hundred dollars. They're normally like around a hundred four to a hundred dollars on Amazon. But I actually shopped around and found a killer deal on this one. I got this one for like seventy dollars. So you can find good deals on SE3s. You just really have to watch out. You know, go to a lot of knife uh, shops in particular. I got this one from Knives Ship Free when they were doing like a blowout sale, or they just wanted to like sell a whole bunch of excess stuff, so they were discounted it heavily so I really liked this one I was able to get it like I said for a really good deal and this one's a little bit of a special one just for its colorations it's a green and uh, blaze orange as well as it's a modified tang so I really like this one I've been very impressed with it and like I said what I like most about this knife is that dual factor that not only can you carry this in a bushcrafting situation and still have a very capable knife but if you want a knife that also duels as your everyday carry neck knife for a defensive purpose, this is a very good choice. Now on to a little bit more of an unusual one. I'd say in the LT Right lineup, this is probably one of their least talked about or more rare knives. And this is the LT Right Camp Muck. Now this is actually one, and I'll be doing a full review on this in a bit. But this is actually one that came over from the, uh, what is it? Blind Horse Knife Days, and this one was the Camp Muck by Blind Horse Knives, but of course Blind Horse Knives no longer exists, but LT Wright took this design on, and once again, I think they killed it. And in nice. addition, it's a super capable camp knife. Uh, it's extremely good. I've dressed several game animals. It's extremely good at dressing game animals. It's pretty good at doing just regular camp tasks. This is an A2 tool steel, so the edge retention's pretty good. Once again, it's right around the same size as the SC3. You can kind of see, you know, it's it's actually a little smaller than the SC3. And so and it fits right in there, right in my kind of loved, uh, loved uh, size range. So I really like where this falls as far as the size range goes. It's not too big, it's not too small, and once again, it's a very unusual knife, and it's really awesome. I love that Nesmic design. It's not a design you see very frequently anymore, uh, but it's still extremely capable, and if you ever use a Nesmic design, you'll really love it. So that is the LT Wright Camp Muck. This one, like I said, is an A2 tool steel with black and blue G10 that is contoured. So I really love this setup. These are pretty tough to find. Like I was saying, they are rare for a reason. I contacted LT Wright and they only make these every once in a long while in small batches. So if you want one of these, they're really tricky to find, but just Google them. You can likely find a company. Once again, one of my favorite places to get knives is Knives Ship Free, not trying to do an ad for them, but I found both of the SE and this LT right there. Uh, they only had, this was the last one they had in stock though. So um, yeah, these are pretty tricky to find. That's kind of my only uh, hesitancy of making a review with them is they are quite tricky to find and they're not made very frequently. Now to probably one of my favorite, I guess you could say, neck knives. I've carried this, or I carried this. This is decommissioned. Both the companion and this one are decommissioned in case you guys are wondering why you don't see necklaces on them. No longer uh, one of my absolute favorites, but for a very long time, it was one of my most favorite bushcraft knives. Like as a whole, just an entirety of bushcrafting. It still is an extremely hard to beat knife. Uh, if you really want to see the standard of what a bushcraft knife should be, it pretty much is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. I'm not just trying to say that because it's an expensive knife, but overall the complete design on this and the way it's laid out, the way the ex was executed is just extremely good. I have dressed game animals with this knife, everything from grouse to squirrels to hares, every, every really animal I've shot. Uh, every type of animal except large large game animals I've dressed with this it is an extremely capable knife not just in dressing game animals though it is also very good at carving netting needles tri sticks 
uh, really this was a knife that I had to kind of like separate myself with and so when I do a lot of like how-to videos I don't like to do it with this knife just because I use this knife so much I mean it is like my general purpose fix all knife like if I just need a knife to do something I am 99% sure this knife will do it and it's made out of the excellent CPM 3V steel. It is an incredible steel. This 3V, uh, it just goes forever. It's an absolute trooper of a steel. Uh, it is a sharpened spine, or at least a 90 degree spine, so it throws ferro rod sparks very well. Uh, the handle, having mo now more experience than I did when I first got this knife with handles, I will say, at least in the beginning of this handle, it's a little too slender for me. But still, even now, it is pretty good. Another thing I like about this knife, as far as neck knives go, you can see that even with these gigantic mittens on, and these are a very large mitten, in case you guys don't know, these are not tiny little mittens. But uh, even with these very large mittens on, I still have a complete hold. None of my fingers are falling off, even you know with the mittens on. The mitten is not falling off the back or really the front. You know, I can still fully use this knife because this handle is quite large. This is, I think, the largest neck knife I have here here and this is probably honestly the largest size for neck knife I would ever recommend but overall like I said if you're looking for a standard of measure for a bushcraft or really neck knife this is it I do think if you were to go with this knife it's really hard to go wrong with it it is expensive I'm not gonna lie it's around $230 uh, if not more because some of the handle options but uh, it is you do get what you pay for a lot. top five knives or neck knives for bushcraft in particular uh, I could go into a defensive role like or everyday carry where I'm carrying neck knives for defensive uh, or in a defensive role and certainly it would change up a little bit there would be other knives in this mix but this one's more specifically talking about outdoors knives and like I said over my experience of years in bushcraft would have been some of my favorite uh, neck knives right, so hopefully you've enjoyed that don't forget to comment like share subscribe and tell me what your thoughts are what are you guys five top neck knives or do you guys even carry neck knives uh, I'm not sure not everyone carries neck knives, but I certainly do and really love it. If you guys don't carry neck knives, seriously think about it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's all for now, and I'm out.